So, um, I work for, for the IT storage uh, group at CERN, and I have to, to do the traditional data archiving at CERN uh, slide. So, I'm, I'm working on tapes. So, you see that we have uh, an exponential growth. We have about, uh, we, sto we store everything at the term. We are not allowed to lose things. Uh, we have a lot of tape li several tape libraries, uh, more tape drives, of course. And uh, we're using about 180 petabytes of data nowadays. Uh, the current capacity is uh, 0.6 exabytes, uh, so it's way lower than uh, Dropbox, but still, still uh, a sizable amount of data. Uh, so we are planning an evolution because uh, we see that the previous paradigm was more castor do everything like disk and tapes, and now. Uh, EOS is a disk. EOS is some strategic storage platform for disk files. But tape is a strategic long-term archive medium. So we need to, they are made to love. And they are meeting in CTA, some tape archive projects. So uh, the idea here is to streamline the data pass and software uh, and the infrastructure from the experiments to the tape, uh, to the tape libraries for archiving. So that's basically how it looks like, experiments uh, interact just with EOS, and on the back we're gluing uh, of EOS we're gluing CTA. Uh, CTA um, EOS manages CTA files as replica, and uh, CTA contains a catalog of whatever went uh, from EOS to tapes and has and can be retrieved. And uh, it just makes sure that we're optimizing the way we're moving the data from and to tapes, uh, because tapes are slightly different than disks in terms of access. So uh, the development timeline. Uh, we just started, so end of 2016, uh, we, pr we, we, uh, we proposed the first functional prototype release. Uh, and the timeline is uh, really aggressive. In 2018, we were supposed to deliver something that we can use in production uh, with a migration plan from Castor data, uh, Castor tape data to, um, to, to CTA. Uh, but now we need to address all the deployments we have because uh, developing CTA means that we have to, uh, to tightly couple uh, the development between EOS and CTA. Uh, and we need also extensive testing so that the two, pro two software projects are not diverging too much and uh, all the functionalities that were working are still working in future releases. Um, let's see how we were doing integration tests in Castor. Uh, Castor had, the situation for Castor was easy. It's just a single component. Everything is in one Git repository. It's a single software, uh, single software containing disk and tapes. Uh, we were using virtual, uh, virtual machines to de deploy with puppets, and we had the limited uh, set of external dependencies uh, per developer instance, so one database and uh, one virtual tape library, because we need to work with tapes. So that's why it's a bit complicated. Uh, but this approach has, has several issues, OK? Uh, if you want to develop a new developer instance, it takes a long time because it's a full, de deployment of several, uh, a full puppet deployment of several virtual machines. So it can take a few, few, uh, several minutes. Um, when you change a code in Castor and you need to, uh, to change them, you, you may need to change the manifest in Puppet. So you have two repositories uh, that are diverging, and you, you, are, you have tests that are just not reproducible. Okay, the, the, the Castor repo is not enough to produce exact test for that commit. And uh, what about real tape hardware? Uh, because we need some time to, have, to, to develop features that uh, must be tested on real hardware. But it's way further the line. I mean, uh, it's, in, it's managed in separators group, but different set of people. And when the developer wanted to do that, wanted to do those tests, they needed to take um, a tape server out of production, deploy the code, and test it. So, with CTI, we went, I, went, uh, I was appointed by my boss. Okay, he told me, Let's, you will do some system integration. I said, yeah, great. Um, so I wanted to, to try to, to avoid this because the situation here is a bit more complex. We have two distinct software projects, EOS and CTA. We have more dependencies. We need uh, in one, object store in one object store in addition. Uh, and how to fix everything. So I'm lazy and impatient, so I don't want any manual operation. Continuous integration is a perfect solution for that. Do everything every, at every commit. Uh, make it fast because it's going to wait. And uh, I should 
this system should allow also easy beta testing deployment for administrator and user. It must be simple so that my boss can run it, and it must be bulletproof so that it doesn't come to my office when he has problems. And second other question, how to test real tape hardware. So the approach I, I choose for, uh, for continuous integration uh, was to go to GitLab CI. GitLab is uh, the Git repositories we're using at, at CERN mainly. Um, this is a screenshot of the pipeline, uh, pipeline executing on the CTA repo. So you see that you have two first steps where you're building RPMs as artifacts. We're not publishing them to a repo because if you have a, bro a, broken, uh, a broken RPM, you don't want it to go outside of, uh, of the CI tests. Okay? Uh, then we have a different test, uh, a series of tests using Valgrinds, Valgrinds, and then uh, we publish a generic Docker image. Okay, uh, we build it and then we rename it so that we can easily find it in in, in the system tests. I say uh, we publish it also in the GitLab re registry, and this we have a single uh, image for all the tests, and this in, this image should be able to be instantiated into whatever we need, CTA, Castor, or no, CTA or EOS uh, and all the components we need. Uh, it, it contains all the CTA artifacts that were built previously, a specific EOS version, a specific Xcode version, and everything is contained there so that we can replay this. We, this is a reproducible test when you have this image. Okay? Uh, and then we, need to, then we will run the system test from this infrastructure into a Kubernetes cluster. So uh, I will explain you a few a few simple Kubernetes con concept, if, if you don't know. It's, more, it's not about running Kubernetes, but this is a Kubernetes cluster. It runs on several machines, you don't care. You just need to know that um, uh, you have in, in Kubernetes you can define namespace. A namespace is basically a subnet. In each namespace you can have uh, different type of objects. Configuration is associated to a namespace, so it's available to any object in, uh, in the namespace. On each pod, a pod is uh, like a machine, it gets an IP address. You can run one or, or several uh, Docker images. They can communicate, uh, those sever several Docker images on the same pod can communicate with IPC or using localhost uh, as an IP address. And then you can implement, pods can implement service. Service are published on the DNS in the cluster. So this service is service1.namespace1.cluster. Okay, it can be reached this way, automatically open creation. Uh, this uh, namespace is separated from this one. They cannot communicate directly. And you can also define consumable resources. So consumable resources are persistent volumes. You can label them. So if you need a specific type, uh, let's say I, I want to, this is uh, like an object store. So I, I grab the Ceph one and I type and bound it to, the, to this namespace one. So it's not available for the other to consume. So if you require, require, require more uh, resources than available, your, your namespace won't, won't get it. You, you, won't be, you, you won't feel mixing up resources between instances. Okay, so as the resources, we defined it for each test instance. Uh, each developer, is, each instance is one full cluster. It's a single VM uh, Kubernetes cluster, one per developer. Uh, you get each, each, in, each instance gets one Oracle database account plus unlimited SQLite accounts one self object store, which is remote, and unlimited local object stores, uh, and 10 virtual tape libraries with each two drives and 10 tapes so that they can conduct in all the tests they want, okay? So to instantiate the test, you create the namespace, you instantiate all the services, uh, consume the resources you need, uh, if you need a local object store, uh, and on Oracle database, you can do that easily. Uh, you associate then the configuration you grabbed from the persistent volume into the namespace so that you can actually configure the services and the, and the pods. And you instances all the pods with their associated container to implement all the services. And you wait for the pods to be ready so that you can then run the, the system test. Okay, so that's what how um, Kubernetes, Kubernetes instance for CTA and EOS test look like. Uh, this is a, a test namespace. We have the object store configuration database configuration and tape library, uh, tape library configuration. The various pod we need is a CTA front-end uh, that runs the CTA front-end service. Uh, the EOS instance, everything runs on a single pod and it exposes the CTA EOS, um, uh, EOS uh, instance. CTA CLI that allow to, to pass commands uh, interactively to, to, the, to the system. 
The tape server, which, is mana which, has one t which uses one tape driver and do actually the tape transfers. And the KDC. This is uh, the Kerberos authentication uh, realm. You have one Kerberos realm per namespace. And we have our own set of users so that we don't have external dependencies on services or service account defined externally. All the service accounts we're using are defined internally and we can add them if we want. Uh, we're not also interacting with the rest of the world, so that's perfectly fine. And then we run a system test. So this is an example one. We set up the workflow engine here in EOS that will say, and then we XRDCP a file, so we copy a file to the CTA EOS instance and we wait until it's on tape. Um, then we remove the, the disk copy from EOS and we retrieve it from tape and we, look, we wait for it to be back uh, in EOS. And if it's okay, it's a, cross, uh, it's a cross in GitLab and we have the test successfully done. Okay, this is a sample one. Now the, the other question, how do you deal with real tape drive tests? Because uh, virtual tape drive is easy, but uh, uh, those are a bit harder. So I said that I have an honors group for, for my Kubernetes cluster. So the idea is that I just expanded this, um, um, this host group to manage uh, real tapes, uh, real hardware. hardware. I had the physical uh, drive resources in Europe because you, know, you need to know which drive is connected to which uh, physical server. And then you increase a bit the timeout because, I mean, it takes more time to mount a real tape than a virtual one. And you're done. I mean, that's easy. So with this approach, we can exactly deploy the same Kubernetes instance, the same exactly pod definition uh, Docker containers on real tape hardware and run exactly the same system test in, on real hardware so that you can test uh, logical block protection on, hard, uh, on, on, real, on real tape drives. You can, uh, you can test uh, um, access order change in, on real tape hard drives. You, you, you can do tests you cannot do on uh, virtual tapes. So this is the end, but I have a small demo if you want to see the video later. Um, so this approach is very powerful to address and federate all, all your use case, federate all, all, your, all your use case because uh, you just, uh, my boss, for example, found an issue with 1,000, uh, when transmitting 1,000 files. You open an issue on GitLab and the issue was fixed by the developer. It, it, was, uh, it required different changes in EOS Castor and then it was followed up. And uh, the commit version that was deployed, uh, that was uh, done by the developer, he could then take this one out and retest his use case, and he was perfectly happy with that. So everybody, everybody's federated around this con those concepts. Uh, it's fast, it's flexible, it's isolated. We're not running anything outside, and everything is self-contained in the in the CTA repository. Everything is versioned so that you can replay it. Uh, what I need to do now is evangelize because uh, Kubernetes is kind of uh, new for, for, for everyone. Um, need to write and structure more system tests, make, it, make them more systematic, and bulletproof uh, reproducibility to, to catch regression tests and allow um, branch tests to validate that they are fixing uh, some issues. So I don't have much time you have, but I have a four minute demo uh, in what it looked like in real life. We still have we still have a little bit of time. So if you have this demo, okay, here? it's it's yeah? just uh, the next slide. Okay, Easy. perfect. <laughs> okay, so here you see. Uh, so okay, so this is uh, this is uh, this is my shell on my machine. This is I'm Julien. Okay, so I, I create a namespace. I just create the instance, and you see here this is cockpit view of Kubernetes. Uh, uh, those those uh, those are services, and this is the init uh, init pod. Its role is to um, label tapes. Uh, Initialize the database uh, structures, tables, and those, and uh, do other things. Uh, initialize the object store as well. You can uh, go into uh, another view on the tool to see to get the the, the logs of STD out. So uh, here it's installing the RPMs, and you have a shell if you want to to do interactive stuff on your on your container. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's not much happening there, but. Uh, it's installing all the RPMs we, we, we built. And here you see formatting the tapes. Boom, okay, it's over. So when it's finished, we instance the other pods because the, the instance and uh, the structure we need are initialized. And you see those pods come in and the service, uh, when they're implementing the service, tuk, it's connected. And uh, okay, so all the pods I described before, 
uh, we're configuring the KDC because we need to have in, uh, we need to configure the realms on all the pods before being able to start to authenticate with the X root and those. So wait for the KDC and then do a bit of synchronization be before going uh, before going further. Um, okay, so you see the various pod here. This is in it. It's great because it's finished. It's finished with, with, with without failure, so it's fine. And we wait. Okay, so now we're configuring KDC clients on the needed pods. Uh, this is the Kerbus, uh, the K-list result. Now we're configuring the shared secrets between um, CTA US and uh, the CTA front end so that they can communicate and, and exchange uh, data and trigger uh, workflows. And uh, yeah, then it's uh, basically done and you will see the rest. I can take question if you want, uh, maybe. Okay. Or you want to silently wait for the rest? Up to you. It's your demo. It's uh, uh, EOS is mostly configured here. I mean. Okay. <laughs> okay. Perfect. So thank you very much. <laughs> okay. So um, it was very interesting. So now, yeah. Okay. So now it's uh, all, all the pods are, are okay. You see that in the command line and here in the, in the tool. And now we're we're launching uh, the retrieve system test. We go to test and launch this simple script I explained previously. Uh, here is a library configuration. You see the type, it's MHVTL, so virtual library, the, the drives, the tapes. And here we're sending XRDCPing the, the file to EOS. We wait for it dynamically to be uh, archived on tape. So we have a script that just look at the logs of uh, the tape server. And okay, it's on tape. Okay, so yep. We delete it and we retrieve it. Okay, this is a retrieval part. And uh, this script now is checking that uh, the disk is safe back in EOS. And uh, yeah, it should be back. Yep. Okay, it's done. Okay, it's okay. So all tests passed, it's fine. And then, uh, yeah, we just delete this instance and we it, it's available for uh, any, any other, uh, other instance or test or interactive uh, work that we would like to, to do. When deleting, we also wipe the DB and wipe the object store, and it's fine. Okay, okay perfect. Sounds very good. <laughs> so, what are the questions? A question. There is a question in the back. No, in fact, I provide. Uh, I have. Uh, I, I just provide them with uh, with a Kubernetes uh, virtual machine. So mine is this one. It's a CTA Dev Julien, and uh, Eric will get CTA Dev Eric, and uh, and so on. I mean, so everyone gets one uh, one uh, one VM with one Kubernetes cluster is credential for one Oracle database, one uh, Ceph object store, and then he has to manage the resources if you want to to do strange tests. He has to be within the, the, this limited amount of resources. Yeah, but is there a remote virtual machine on the infrastructure? Yeah. Because we have our, our developers running their virtual boards on their own apps with Docker and doing all the tests, but adding Kubernetes to that would sound to take speed. But in fact, the, the thing is that uh, there were more, there, there were, uh, it's difficult to convince uh, both developers and production. Uh, everybody's reluctant to change uh, the way they, they are working. And um, initially, the developer said, OK, uh, I'm happy with that, what I have. But the thing is that the fact that it federates the users, the production use cases, and the system tests together, it means that they cannot ignore it uh, for long. So they find solution. I mean, you can, you can install a Kubernetes instance on your laptop if you want to work on your laptop. That's, that's, uh, that's not so complicated those days. And uh, you, I, I mean, I have a, a set of scripts to install uh, Kubernetes that I use in. Uh, in Puppet, and they can reuse those. And it's just a matter of investment, uh, of investment from their side. And uh, the thing is that you, you see quickly that uh, they're, they're starting to play with containers, but it's difficult to manage individually. Then they start to update RPMs, and everything is broken. So they're interested into getting the containers you've, you, you, you've crafted for them with all the right version and so on. So they go to this solution because it's the most straightforward way uh, to reproducibility. That's a key word, in fact. Okay, there is one more question at the back. Yeah, a little bit similar to this. Is, 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 did each person have their own Kubernetes instance in the cluster? I think you also saw that from having bigger ones that's shared. 
Yeah, so, uh, so the, shared, the, the, the shared Kubernetes cluster is a use case we have for, for production machine because on the production machine you have one physical tape server and each tape server has one drive attached. So if you want to, to manage a full library, you need a, a Kubernetes cluster with, um, with all the servers having a tape drive attached. And you need to schedule uh, not one tape server like I did there, but several, multiple uh, tape servers that uh, are attached to uh, one per kubelet uh, in, uh, in the Kubernetes cluster so that can, they can get each their own uh, physical tape drive. But that's, that's a use case we have in production. But for, for developers, I mean, we or, or system tests, you don't need to go that far. We don't ever need to have a lot of, uh, a lot of space for, uh, to, to store the file in EOS, for example. I mean, you care about this when you need to, to uh, when you have physical constraints or you need to do performance tests. And the performance test is, is still not there, so we have to work on that. I mean, like, get, find a way to do recurrence this and get faster drives so that we can stress the EOS instance. Um, get faster drives. I mean, it's things we'll, we will do in later stages of the software development because for now it's still getting, making everything functional and cooperate uh, with, uh, with the use. Okay, any other questions? Okay, if not, let's thank the speaker again.